At MetroPCS, we let the numbers do the talking. Four, enjoy a reliable 4G LTE network that's faster than Sprint. Two, get two free smartphones when you switch to MetroPCS. 99, the percentage of people in the U.S. covered by MetroPCS. Get two free Samsung Galaxy J3 Prime smartphones when you switch. MetroPCS, wireless figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network are active on Metro PCS in past 90 days. Coverage claim based on talk text coverage. Speed claim from downloads. See store for details, terms, and conditions. Hi, this is Bill BS Job Search Advice Radio. I'm Jeff Hoffman, the big game hunter. I'm the head coach for Job Search, CoachingHQ.com, and NoBSCoachingAdvice.com. And welcome to episode 740. Today is the... 300th episode of my other show, Job Search Radio. And in honor of that, and for the entire month of May, I have a special promotion where if you order a 30 minute coaching session with me during May, the cost of that, rather than the usual $250 I charge, is $99. So to take advantage of that, email me at Jeff Altman at TheBigGameHunter.us and in the subject line, put the words Job Search Radio. You'll get an email back with a payment link. Once we receive payment, we'll schedule an appointment for us to chat. I want to help all of you. All of you. I want to help all of you. Okay, sorry. And today's show on No BS Job Search Advice Radio involves a situation where a person got stood up by a recruiter. Should I call them? Should I email them? What should I do? Hope you find the show helpful. Give it five stars in iTunes or Stitcher. It helps other people find it. And with that, let's get going. And today's question is, a recruiter missed a call with me for an interview. Should I email them to follow up? No, don't email them. Call them. Call them on the phone. Say, we were scheduled uh, to speak at 4 o'clock um, on Tuesday. Um, I was there. Is everything okay? Now, what you're trying to do is to flush them up and to circle, to encourage them to respond. Now, before I go further, I just want to say that an employer would be emailing you if you missed an interview. But for you, you're a human being. And as human beings, you want to connect person to person. Now, they'll have a degree of guilt. Now, they may also say, oh, I'm so sorry that emergency such and such occurred. I didn't have, whenever they say that, that's a lie. No, no emergency suddenly uh, overwhelms a situation sufficiently that they can't send you a quick email and say, you know, I'm not going to be able to make our, our call. Uh, it could be rescheduled. So if they say that, they're giving you a bull. But you want to hear it in their tone of voice. So you definitely call. You don't email. If they don't respond to your call and there's nothing on their uh, voicemail that says they're out of the office indefinitely or they're going to be out of the office for a few days, you know, then you and they're not getting back to you, you can assume that something changed for them and that they're not considering you. Or the position suddenly come on hold, which is a different form of change, but that's a different conversation. At the end of the day, you've learned something about this person, not the company, but the person and whether or not you can trust them through how they respond to you when you call that you won't get from an email. An email, it's impersonal. They can hide in certain ways from an email. So I never encourage people to email to follow up. I encourage you to call. Learn from the tone of voice and the behaviors and how apologetic they are. Look, I, I just had a speaking engagement canceled uh, on me uh, two weeks in advance. Stuff like this happens. The person uh, who organized the event uh, sent me an email and also said, I'd like to schedule a Skype with you so I can personally apologize uh, and work on rescheduling with you. Nice way to handle it. You know, first thing was an email to let me know and says, and says I want to personally apologize to you. Nice way to handle it. Hiding an email isn't good enough. You wasted your time. Find out directly from them. 
So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here are a few ways that you can connect with me. The first one, of course, is reach out to me on LinkedIn. My page there is linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. Mention that you listen to the show because I love to hear from my listeners. It just puts a big smile on my face. Next, if you're an executive and interested in my coaching you, email me at jeffalpin at thebiggamehunter.us. Mention in the subject line that you're interested in coaching. I'll reach back to you. We'll set up a time to speak. We'll figure out whether this makes sense. I want to be clear. I'm not here to be your recruiter. I no longer do search work. I'm a coach helping people find their next position. And as such, my work is not free. I'm not doing this as a charitable endeavor. I'm here to see whether I can help you and whether your background is something where I can be of service. And if you're not an executive, the best place to connect with me is with JobSearchCoachingHQ.com. That's my site where I've curated information that I've created and other people have created. It's there with their permission, of course. And you can ask me questions. So right now, there's over 400 pieces of content there, plus the ability to ask me questions. So again, JobSearchCoachingHQ.com is that site. And by the way, and I haven't really mentioned this on the site, in addition to doing job search coaching, I also do executive coaching and life coaching. And I've done so for years. So if you're interested in that, message me again at my email address, jeffalpin at thebiggamehunter.us. Tell me about what you're interested in, and I'll get back to you and we'll talk about it. Hope you found this helpful. And in the meantime, have a great day. Take care.